everybody, Deborah here, also known as Dewage42. What do you think that all diabetics have in common? Not even the condition, because there's two different kinds of diabetes. What you actually should know is blood testing. Yes, the bane of our existence, having to poke our fingers like a million times a day, sometimes it feels like. Yeah. It's my take on testing the blood and poking the fingers, blah. I'm actually gonna show you how I do it though. There are a zillion different kinds of meters out there. The one that I have was, believe it or not, provided by my health insurance company through work. This is the first time they've done anything nice to us diabetics. They've given us meters, fancy schmancy meters at that. This one is by Lavongo, which is the company. And uh, this meter actually phones home. There's like a cell phone uh, radio in it and it reports your results back to the website, which you can go in and monitor and stuff, and you can share it with your doctor and do all kinds of fancy stuff to it. This is bigger than a lot of them, kind of bulky to carry around. That's sort of the negative to it. Um, it also reminds you if, if you need test strips and stuff, it'll send them to you. Believe it or not, they're actually free. I know, right? Yes, I am very thankful that I do not have to pay for my test strips, yet I still don't test enough because I'm kind of a schmuck sometimes. Anyway, the process, Testing your blood sugar, which is very important, starts with giving it a little cleanup, little alcohol swipe. You might see us with these little things. This one's the El Cheapo one from Walmart because damn it, it does the job and it's cheap. And you know me, I am a bargain hunter. Rip it open. Ah, the smell of alcohol and not even the good kind. Hello. You clean your finger or fingers. And a lot of what cleaning it is, is more the friction than the alcohol. I usually clean a couple of them really well because sometimes the fingers are stubborn and don't want to give up their goodness. Then you have to try another one. Then you take the uh, little container of test strips, pop it open and hope that none stuck to the top and fling out when you open it. Yes, I, I speak from experience. Pull one out, not four or five. Again, experience. Seal that sucker back up right away because moisture and stuff does affect them. These things that they, you carry them in the big containers like this, uh, they actually have special stuff in it to keep the moisture at bay, to help them keep well longer, to keep good. This is a test strip. I'll come in closer. This one says Lavongo right on it, the name of the company. Most of them will have their names on it. They're very proud of their test strips. Um, this little end here is the little bitty part where the blood goes in. This end is what goes into the meter itself. Yeah, I'll show you how that works here in a sec. Now I took this out of its little case. You don't have to, but just for easier showing and handling and not holding up the whole kit and caboodle there. You let the uh, printed side face you in this case, shove it in, it wakes it up. You probably heard it go brrrp, and now you probably can't read the screen anymore because, well, electronics. It says checking strip. This, like I said, this is a fancy one. And then it says ready to check glucose, and it shows you a little picture of a finger dripping blood onto the test strip. How nice. Another part that's very important is the thing that you poke the hole in your finger with. And you need to change them out with fresh ones. What the heck is that you say? This looks kind of like a big fat clicky pen. It clicks all right, but it's not a pen. These are the little tiny needles that go in it. I know the case looks big, but when I show you the needle itself, you're gonna be surprised. I'm gonna take this one apart and take the old one out because I really should change it. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it before I discard it, if you can see it. That is very small. That's all that pokes you and not even all of it does because you dial it up to how high or how low you need it to be. Now I'm going to eject this one. Boo. I'm going to set it aside and I'll deal with it in a minute. Now, oh gee, an empty lid. Stand by. You take one of the new ones, put it in that nice little hole that's nicely sized for it because well, that's what it's made for. Push it in you hear a little click. It's set. Now we have to take off the protective cover. 
you twist it ever so gently and pull it off and set it aside. Then you put the lid back on. At this point, it's ready to go. If I push this button, which is kind of, it's not really lit up yellow, it's a little yellow thing that shows up there. It's not electronic at all. Push it, listen. Ooh, scary, right? Not really. <laughs> but you pull this back out. Hear that click again? That reset it. It's got the little yellow doohickey again. It's ready to go. Now for the actual poke in the finger. You, want it, you don't want to put it right in the middle. That hurts more. There's no need for that. Go a little bit to the side. It really, trust me on this. Doesn't really hurt. Just a little tiny pinch. Then you gotta give it a little squeeze. They say not to squeeze it, they say to milk it. I squeeze it anyway, because you know, rebel, I don't know. Get some blood out there. That's actually more than it needs. But I like to get a little more than is necessary because if you have too little, you gotta do it again. All right, my meter says ready to check glucose. And it kind of sucks it in what they call capillary action. When it gets enough blood in there, it beeps like that one just did. And then it gives you tips and stuff. And oh, my blood sugar is a little high. I had a lot of junk food today. Bad me. It's 172. You grab your little alcohol thing back to wipe off the excess blood because you don't want to bleed everywhere. I mean, unless you're into that, whatever. Now, mine asked me questions. Before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, after lunch, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to call this after lunch because, well, it's a little further after lunch, but I did eat a lot of junk. After lunch, and this is next. And you can also dial in your insulin and your carbs in here. I don't go through all those shenanigans partially because I'm kind of lazy. And then it asks you more questions. I feel fine. I don't feel well. I'm lightheaded. I'm stressed out. I ate more, took more meds, missed my meds or other. Um, in this case, I'm going to say eight more because I ate more than I was going to. And then it asks you if that's okay. And you hit submit. Secure upload in progress. It actually kind of makes a phone call that you don't know. You don't see or hear or feel or anything. And upload complete. And then gives me a tip. You are still within the recommended target of below 180 after meals. Yay! Another interesting feature about this, you hit done, and then you throw away your test strip in an appropriate receptacle. Another interesting feature is, uh, one time my blood sugar was really high, and these are parameters that you set yourself when you set up the account with this one. Um, it will send an email to a loved one or two or 12 when you are too high or too low. My blood sugar was well over 300. I was out of insulin, life was sucking that week. And I tested my blood sugar and sent it in. And yes, my friend got an email saying, this person has high blood sugar, please contact them, make them go to a doctor, or, you know, whatever, danger Will Robinson. But that is kind of cool. And also when I took my blood sugar and it showed me that reading, it also asked me if they wanted me a counselor to call me right then. I said no, because I, you know, I knew why it was high. It wasn't a big surprise, but that is part of daily life being a diabetic. Um, I'm supposed to test four or five times a day. I'm not always a good girl. Yeah, I know. I should be testing more. But my numbers in general stay really, really good. My doctor has been pleased with what I'm doing. So I'll try to keep it up. And I just try to be better. The next day, you try to start off. You have good intentions and you test some more. But yeah, it is important to test. And you wonder why diabetics carry all this stuff with them all the time because they have to, and it's expensive too. If you're not lucky enough to have some kind of a free thing where you get your test strips for free, first year I've ever had that by the way, test strips will cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, um, it was costing me every three months about $95 for test strips and I was testing sort of conservatively. So it's, it's kind of craptacular. Um, you know a diabetic? Cut them some slack. They got to put up with a lot of crap. Anyway, that is my take on my diabetes care today. 
Uh, just thought I'd do this as sort of a follow-up to last week's My Take. Link will be down below for that one because it is about diabetes and the insulin pump, which of course I have right here. Yes, it lives in my bra. It's happy there. Uh, stay tuned for other videos. I've got more My Takes over here. Please subscribe down here if you haven't already and click the like button on, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about your diabetes story. Do you have any videos about it? Please share the links. I want to know. See you soon.